Hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Mr. Ahmed Noba for his kind invitation to participate in this live webinar. Uh, my name is Saadid Lejan and I'm a medical physicist at King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center. Please allow me to share with you some of the things I learned so far during this plan competition. Uh, here is my agenda at a glance. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the competition, uh, the contouring stage, and my arc geometry, uh, some optimization tips, and my results, and some conclusions. Uh, first of all, uh, this was my first time to join an international competition. Uh, I have used rapid arc optimization for this case, and I have to acknowledge that I've never pushed a plan that far before because typically we use 3D planning for our clinical cases. Uh, regarding the case selection, I think it's interesting because uh, the targets are not central, so you have to be careful with your uh, hydrocenter positioning. Uh, the three targets, the supraclav, axilla, and left breast, together make up a non-homogeneous overall target, which limits your field size selection and our extension. Uh, also, a left breast case is interesting because of the proximity to organs at risk, specifically the ipsilateral lung and the heart. Also, sparing the contralateral breast and lung is a big challenge, especially with the selected criteria. Uh, and regarding the criteria in general, I think it's well chosen. However, the constraints on the right side of the patient were difficult to satisfy in my case. Uh, on the other hand, I found some other objectives overly achieved. Uh, therefore, I came to the conclusion uh, that I have to prioritize my objectives in order to score more instead of focusing on the clinical value. But however, achieving these objectives surely does not contradict with the clinical value. The first thing I did was to try to understand the criteria. I have made up this table uh, of structures and points. So the target has 45 points, heart 20 points, left lung 19 points, right breast 6 points, right lung 5, and spinal cord 5. Uh, we can see that uh, in the first three structures, 84% uh, of the points uh, are there. So you, this helps you to prioritize your uh, optimization objectives. A little bit about VMAT, or volumetric modulated arc therapy. Uh, the gantry rotation is divided into control points. Uh, for Varian, there are uh, about 178 control points in a full rotation. In this example, we see eight control points here. Uh, each control point has different MLC speed with maximum speed of 2.5 cm per second, uh, different dose rates from between 0 and 600 mu per minute, or more than that for the case of triple F beams and gantry speed, which is on average 4.8 degree per second. Uh, if the, uh, the gantry speed can go less than that uh, uh, for the case that the dose rate is saturated. So the optimizer might want to push more dose uh, from specific angles. Uh, in the contouring stage, uh, I made the structure of high resolution. Uh, I also used partially segmented organs at risk. Uh, and I used conformation structures, rings. We're going to see uh, these in a moment. So these are the partially segmented organ at risk. Uh, if we see th this is the right breast contour, uh, this is the, the small contour is the partially segmented organ at risk. I use this structure to push the dose out of this region more uh, in order to uh, stress on the optimizer that I want the dose out of this region. I have made one also for the left, uh, for the right line, sorry and for the heart as well, as we can see here. For confirmation, I used an overall global ring. Uh, it has two millimeter separation from the target, or from the overall target. Um, I also used a specialized uh, rings for the supraclav and for the axilla. I did not use a specialized ring for the uh, left breast because its uh, volume is large enough and uh, the axilla and superclub are smaller targets, so I wanted more conformality uh, at, uh, at those regions. My geometry comprised of Eclipse version 13.6 with AAA uh, dose calculation algorithm uh, together with a true beam LINAC. Some limitations here. Uh, for target inhomogeneity, the fact that the target is comprised of uh, superclub, axilla, and left breast, this means that you have to use multiple field sizes per target. And to spare the uh, ipsilateral organ at risk, you have to be careful with your hydrocenter positioning. 
and to spare the contralateral organ at risk, you have to limit ligamentary rotation. And we have this limitation of MLC over carriage maximum travel of 14.5 cm, which gives you some limitation on your X uh, field opening. Therefore, I used all the available assets for me. In my case, nine coplanar partial arcs, all six MV triple F beams. So the advantage of the triple F beam is that uh, if you did not use uh, large field sizes, you get to make use of the high dose rate. And all these fields are coplanar, so I did not use couch kicks. And the fact that they are partial arcs, it gives you faster delivery of your treatment. The treatment time is around four, uh, four minutes or so. Uh, th this is my geometry. This is where I put the isocenter. As we can see here, the left lung in this case looks like it has a, has a crescent shape. So I try to put my isocenter at the edge of this crescent shape. Uh, uh, and I also try to have beam block my fields. And this helps in irradiating the target while avoiding the organs at risk as much as possible, as we see in this example. Um, for the superclav, I used two partial arcs as well. This is the first arc extends from 290 to 130 uh, clockwise with a little bit of a collimation, uh, collimator angle. And this is just to give the optimizer some flexibility at the edges of the target. And this is the second arc from 119 to 330. These are my axilla arcs. Uh, as you can see, they're all partial arcs. I used two partial arcs here as well from 290 to 45 and from 179 to 70 counterclockwise. And for the left breast, I used actually four partial arcs this time. And this is just to give the optimizer more flexibility because the left breast is the largest target in our case. And uh, I just gave it four arcs to be more flexible. This is the first one with the half beam block from 295 to 75 uh, clockwise. The second one is the same, but I opened the X jaws a little bit more just to give, again, the system more flexibility to find more solutions. And the, this is the third and fourth arcs. They're identical arcs with uh, different uh, rotation directions. Uh, the last arc that I have is the overall arc, what I call the overall arc. As we can see, it's less than a quarter of a rotation. Uh, it on, it en encompasses all the targets uh, together. And the goal of this arc is to smooth the those homogeneity at the edges because if you give specialized arc you're not too sure about how the system will handle the edges of the targets how the homogeneity of those will uh, uh, gonna be uh, there so I added this arc just to make sure that the uh, connection between targets is homogeneous uh, my optimization I started with targets on rings only so I started from the most superior target the supraclav the supraclav ring and the overall ring. Then I added the axilla and I added the left breast, then the other organs at risks, and I tried to be patient. The reason I did this is just I wanted the system to uh, 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 to deposit the dose from superior to, uh, to uh, inferior in order to have more control on the uh, on which arcs uh, which arcs is uh, allocated to which targets. Uh, this is my optimization after five minutes. As we can see here, the, uh, it, does it did not achieve the, uh, the, the target very well, and uh, although the system has plateaued. So uh, when I told you try to be patient, uh, as we can see in this example, after 32 minutes only, and that's step three out of five, and we're still at phase one out of four, uh, we can see that the, uh, uh, the, DV, uh, the DVH started to uh, find uh, the system started to find good solutions for the uh, for the total target. So, uh, in a nutshell, I paused the optimizer until the cost function plateaued at the odd number steps. I, I also actually uh, paused it a little bit also for the uh, even numbers as well, uh, and especially at the beginning of each phase or calculation resolution. I also re-optimized after the final dose calculation. And I use the current plan dose as intermediate dose for optimization. This is a feature that's there in Eclipse. I used that feature, and I noticed some uh, improvement in uh, a minor improvement, but it helps you in terms of your score. 
especially at, uh, for the uh, right uh, right organs at, uh, right sided organs at risk this is my uh, optimization criteria I, uh, I posted it here for you guys uh, if you wanted to have a look at what I used I always I only optimize using the uh, upper limit and the mean that's how, uh, how I do my organs at risk and for the target I used upper and lower so if my target priorities are 100% for the left lung 95% priority with the maximum dose of 2000 centigrade 80% for the mean to be maximum 700 centigrade for the right lung I gave it 80% priority for a maximum dose of 500 centigrade and this is the mean as well the right lung I tried to push my best I gave it actually a high priority of 90% for a maximum dose of 200 centigrade but I really struggled with the right breast and the right lung. Uh, this is the heart. I actually gave it low priority, 35% only. And the reason is because I tried to block the heart by jaws. And this is the advantage when you try to block organs at risk using jaws instead of MLCs. Uh, you, you, you will get more sparing for these organs at risk. And as we can see here, I did not have to push so hard for the uh, heart because of the selected jaws. Spinal cord, 40% priority. And uh, this is the plan. This is how it looks like. This is my all, all my fields in the axial view. And this is the coronal view. And this is the sagittal view. And here is the 95 dose distribution. I made this short video for you to see. As you can see, it's pretty conformal and homogeneous dose distribution. And again, the fact that we used uh, nine partial arcs does not add any additional treatment time for the uh, for the patient. This is my DVHs. This is the PTV, left lung, heart, spinal cord, right lung, and right breast. Uh, I mentioned earlier that I found some organs at risk uh, at risk uh, easily achieved. Uh, this is the like the heart for this example, while others like the right breast it was very difficult for me to achieve uh, good scores there and just for comparison this is the super clav how it compares with the total target and this is the left breast and this is the axilla uh, these are the dose statistics from the treatment planning system I just posted it here for uh, your reference you can find the minimum dose the maximum dose and the mean dose per structure and here are my results so out of available 45 points for the target, including coverage, confirmation, homogeneity, and hotspot, I achieved 42.4. And out of 20 for the heart, I achieved 20. 17.6 out of 19 for the left lung. And the right breast was my toughest, uh, toughest organ to spare. I achieved 3.5 only. And right lung and spinal cord, I achieved them. And the total score is 93.6. So to conclude, uh, try to understand the criteria to score more, so make a quick table for points uh, per organ. In the contouring, try to use high resolution structures. This helps you in more accurate calculation for your DVH. Uh, use conformation structures, the rings. Use specialized rings if, uh, for smaller targets. Use partially segmented uh, structures for increased organ at risk sparing, and I found this to be really useful in my case. Uh, my geometry, I used nine coplanar partial arcs, six MV triple F beam. Um, I used two partial arcs for the supraclav, two for the axilla, and four for the breast, and one overall uh, overall field just to smooth the uh, areas at the edges of the targets. An optimization: start with the supraclav uh, plus rings, then add the axilla, add the breast, and then the rest, and try to be patient. Uh, thank you so much for uh, having me in this live webinar, and I, in, the, uh, I, in the end I would like to thank Ahmed for uh, really uh, have putting all these efforts uh, for evaluating and trying to share the knowledge uh, across the world. Thank you, Ahmed, and thank you everyone for listening. Thank you very much, Saad, for, your, uh, for such an informative uh, presentation, and your plan is really and based on the plans that uh, I evaluated, it shows it's very uh, it's very practical that it did not include any non-coplanar fields. 
and even though you could achieve uh, very high and very high quality and very conformal uh, plan and also the use of the FFF beams are really is, is a very clever idea because you have limited uh, uh, arcs and this will in order to do that you need the system needs to push the dose in a specific for specific angles in a specific control point that you don't have any organ at risk in the entrance or at the exit of the target which means that you can avoid or you can spare the uh, the the organ at risk by jaws as you mentioned and also the 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 isocenter selection was very clever as you said when you when you just put it in a way that you are avoiding the organ organs at risk using the the, the jaws it's really great uh, presentation and and as i said as I said previously, that good input will lead to good output. So if you contour, if you use the proper contours, if you use the proper field geometry, if you use the proper optimization criteria, you will end up with having a great plan. And because of the fact that no one have the no one is having the best mind in the world, this is the main idea of such plan competition: is that we are doing our best to share the knowledge of the of, of the top planners worldwide and with this competition we are trying to provide people with with the, with the, with a very tough case and we will see how will they uh, deal with this uh, tough case and then we will share their t their, their best uh, plans and then we will share it and we will ask people to try to follow these guidelines in order to achieve the uh, the, the best plan quality i would like to thank you sir for such an informative pr presentations presentation and and we will uh, go ahead now and continue with uh, with Anthony and uh, Vanessa Magliari and by the way for the ones, for the ones who don't know uh, um, Anthony and Vanessa in the 2015 uh, international plan competition they scored the top two uh, they, they, they scored the top two scores uh, so they are well known in the world in, uh, in, in planning and uh, we're really happy to have them here with us and uh, now I will ask them to start their presentation.